So now that we've got the two flaps made, we can make the hinge pin. So we do a control, control N for new design, V for vertical, and the hole through the middle of the loops works out at 6.3 millimeters so if we design it around a six millimeter rod it should work fine so it says six there and pull tool now the hinges are 98 millimeters long so we're going to have a millimeter protruding each end so we'll make 100 of course and we're going to put some reverse chamfers on here now of course you can't put these on at this stage when you're actually making a hinge because you'll never get it through the the loops but for the purpose of the video We'll show how it's done here. So with the pull tool activated, select the corner here and now we want to copy that edge and move it using, you can probably see two arrows here, move it using that arrow. So we're moving that edge. We'll move it 0.75. Then we go back to the uh, the very end, and we're using the pivot edge tool there. And then we we'll pull it out. Point five. So now we've got like a reverse chamfer on the end. We do the same on to the end. Copy the edge. Pull it down 0.75. Pivot edge. Select that edge. Pull it out 0.5. And we've got the chamfer on that end also. While we're at it, we might as well give it the right colour for a piece of shiny steel. So we'll select solid, display, colour, light grey, metallic, finish, eye gloss. H right click rename in pin and control S save save that's the hinge pin Now that we've got that done, we can bring all the parts together in an assembly. So we make a new assembly design. Design, control N for new design. And we want file over here to bring the parts together. We've got the three parts using the control key hinge, hinge three, hinge pin open there's all the parts we need we'll just separate them out uh, two loops 
Now to get these two to mesh properly one of these has to be turned around 180 degrees. So I might as well do that one. 180. Then we've got to line them up. So we've got the two look one highlighted so we'll use that one. We'll stick that on top there. Select that up to Then we mesh these together, find the bow, yep, then up to that bow, and we now mesh together. Hinge pin up to that bow. And we've got this end poking out one two millimeters in that one flush, so we need to move it. Hinge pin there, move this one millimeter that way. One. And there we are, that's poking out one and one there. Itch. Now of course. The flaps are the wrong material colour and also there's no holes in them. So we need to do something about that before we can say we are finished. So we'll do the easy one first. We'll start with the three loops over here. Bring that one up. <coughs> Excuse me. We go to the solid display colour, dark grey we'll use here, metallic, finish we'll say medium gloss, yeah, so there's a medium gloss dark grey, looks like a, a decent steel, so that's that one, same idea here, colour, Dark grey, metallic, finish, medium gloss, it's already selected but there we are, that's medium grey. Now if we go back to the design here, we find that they've changed to grey as well, which is good. So now we can save, do a, a save and it should save the hinge three loops and the hinge two loops but it'll save design one as well we don't want that we'd better change the name which is now rename hinge assembly right. so we've got hinge assembly uh, so now if we do a control s It's asking us where to put the hinge assembly because it hasn't doesn't know about that yet. So we'll see it's, it's in there. Right, and all the asterisks have gone away. Everything is saved. Okay now you may have thought, okay, well he's forgotten about the holes. Well no I haven't. Here's something you might not have thought of way of uh, doing this last exercise so let's go back to the design mode <clears throat> uh, we'll select that face uh, select mode right put a sketch plane on it and view that way we're going to put a line in here and a line down here. Escape. Right click and set as a mirror line. Right click, set as a mirror line. Now our holes are going to be four millimeter. 
So we'll start on about here. That's about in the middle of from there to there. Four. And we do the same again down here. Let's think about there. Another four millimeter. Pull tool P. Select all of these. Well, actually, we can delete these mirror lines now if we go trim. Pull. Hold control key, select them. And pull right through. Now we're going to cancel some of these holes by selecting the interiors I'm just tapping zero return. That gets rid of that hole. Zero return. Zero return. You're setting the diameter to zero, of course. Zero return. Turn it around, and the ones where you can see through on this side, you want to set to zero. Zero return. H. So now if we unfold the hinge, which we can do by selecting move tool, select um, which one is this here, it could be the three loop one, well it doesn't really matter, S set that on the hinge pin, then this looks like the blue one, wrong way, that way. 180 and now we see our holes are offset so the screw heads won't clash, clash. and that's the hinge finished hope you've enjoyed that I hope it's shown you a few techniques you hadn't thought of and I'll catch you again very soon Bye for now. Bye. Oh, before I go, uh, you will also note that as if by magic, the individual parts of the hinge have also had the holes put in. So it works both ways. If you modify an assembly, part on an assembly, it will be reflected in the actual part and vice versa. If you modify the part, it's reflected in the assembly. Hope that's all been very interesting. Bye again. Bye.